Okay, I do believe that we've just gone live. So, yep. Just a quick check there. And it seems as though we're all good. Yep, to go, we've been live for 11 seconds. So, yep, okay, we are today going to draw, or we're going to try and draw, the leaf on the left-hand side. It's all about turning and shading, just as it was, um, just as it was on Tuesday. Effectively, the drawing of the leaf has not been marked out. I'm going to be doing it on... What paper is this? The paper is hot pressed um, paper, which is arches. I'll pop it up there. There we go. So we're going to be drawing on arches 300 GSM. Um, hot pressed paper, pure cotton, 100%. A step up from the paper that we used on Tuesday. I'm hoping that this is going to make a big difference with the actual layering. It's got a bit of a tone to it. It's not so white. However, um, that may well play into our favour. I'm not really planning on doing any backgrounds as such today. I'm just going to be using... Yeah, we're just drawing a basic leaf and I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible so that I can concentrate on the shading. Um, I've got the leaf prepared and up on the screen in front of me to do that. You can see the reference on the screen yourselves if you need. I mean, I put something in the community tab as well. I put a picture in the community tab so you can take a screen grab from there as well. And if you want a high quality image, I've put a link in the description where you can go into Stream 2 and collect one of two different reference pictures. And if you want to um, turn the saturation up by editing those pictures, you'll get the color back as well, should you want to use those. That's the high quality pictures um, that I took with the uh, Canon. So um, I think they're 20 megapixel pictures. So you should get, yeah, there's a lot of quality in those pictures if you wanted to have them, you know, in a much sort of larger resolution in, in order to print them or whatever. So yeah, all of that's in front of us. We've got our mono eraser, which we love. Absolutely love this thing. It's absolutely fantastic. We have lots of different ways to erase. We have our Mars um, eraser, our electric eraser, and the standard eraser as well. So. If we're making mistakes, we've got plenty of ways to correct them today. We also have our pencil set up. We're not going to go beyond these basics. I've got six pencils in front of me. Actually, only only five because two of them are the same. Um, I've got a base outline that I'm going to do in a very, very basic sort of H5. I have a... I can put that one as well, away as well. I have a B a 3B, and that might be all we use, but I also have an 8B so that if the layering's not going too well, I can still get the dark color down. But I'm hoping that the layering will go really well. So yeah, let's see how it goes. I'm gonna put the pencils right here on my right so that if I do change to using any of the different shades, then I can actually show that. Ah, hey there. All right, Jesco. Uh, Jesco Studio, right? Yeah, fancy stuff? What's fancy? The lineup, right? The uh, stuff that's on the screen. Yeah, I've spent a little bit of time setting that up, but also sticking it all in Google Drive and uh, sharing it so that I've got the high resolution stuff out. I think that's probably quite a nice touch, isn't it? I've seen other people do it, so I thought I'd copy. Um, yeah, okay, so let's start. I have, I just want to get that in front of me so I can actually see messages and stuff. There we go, got it all sorted.
Brilliant. Okay. Here we go then. Ah, yeah, the paper it is is pretty good, but it did actually. Um, is it like eleven pounds or something or twelve pounds? It's only five inches by. Well, maybe I'm wrong. Six, seven inches, six, six inches by seven inches, something like that. And it was uh, eleven pounds ninety nine in the UK. So, yeah, very uh, eleven sheets of it. So <laughs> it's it's not cheap, but. You've got to find out what this stuff's like, haven't you? I mean, a lot of artists say that the paper medium is so much more important than the actual pencils and um, paint that you watercolors that you're putting onto this type of medium. So I think it matters. Um, so yeah, I invested in one of these so that I could see how that went. Here we go then. Right, where to start here? Yeah, I'm just going to start with the leaf, I think. So what I haven't done today is put some music on and I don't think I can survive the whole length of this time without doing that so I'm going to stick some on. Let's put on what we got. Go for a straight hmm Laid back. <laughs> ah, see, now I'm alive. <laughs> you can deal with it when there's a bit of music going on. Okay.
so I'm not even sure that you guys can see what I'm actually trying to draw out in terms of a Yeah, you surely can see that, can't you? Wasn't sure if the lighting would be showing up the the background or the, the outline that I'm trying to put here before we start shading anything in. Okay. So I'm just trying to get an outline of everything to start off with. If you look on the Google Drive, I actually put two references under Stream 2. And the first reference, which is just leaf.jpg, is, um, is this leaf that we're drawing here. And that is just a close-up of a log. It's actually got quite a lot of ivy across it. And I put that in there as well because it might be of interest to people and also I may well choose to to do that on a different on a different stream or even perhaps do that on a over a, a couple of streams and try and get try and get some really realistic sort of representation of of that larger it would be a much larger piece of work there's an awful lot of detail to get in from that particular photograph I think I took that photograph from an ancient wood, um, Hembury Wood near Totnes in the south of the UK. And uh, had a fantastic day out there, it was really nice. Well, a couple of hours walk in that wood, right by the River Dart. But um, beautiful place. Excellent, just beautiful. Okay, so we'll try and get some veins in here before we move on to shading. So we know where things are a bit. Try and do the bottom part of the shade of what what these veins actually will or would turn out to be like. And I think I'm just going to do a light shade across all of it.
not so bad. Oh, Jasko, I watched one of your videos on, um, is it Loomis that you were doing? And I've, well, I'm sure you saw, you've seen that I've done some of the Loomis stuff. And uh, I've got the Heads and Hands book, and I've also got, uh, genuinely can't remember, I've got, I've got another book. But there's an archive that you can get every single Andrew Loomis book. The Internet Archive. You can get every single Andrew Loomis book electronically and you can view it. Any of them. Um, and I think I've got them as links on my Loomis uh, portrait videos that I did. I've got links to the Head and Hands book and that takes you through to the Internet Archive and you can see any, there's loads of drawing old drawing books that you can view for free on there I was really quite surprised at how many but there's loads I think his caricature ones on there as well I think that was the one that I saw the video that I watched that you were doing ah thanks Yeah, go ahead and check it out. It's really good. Okay, so a little bit of shading in there, all the way across now. So what drawings is it that you actually, I mean I know that you're getting back into art, much the same as me, after a long time, have you got specific things that you're interested in, or is it solely sort of caricatures or portraits, that side of it? Because I'm a bit lost really, I, I really have an interest in all sorts of different elements, landscapes. And mediums is somewhere where I'm a bit stuck as well. I've sort of promised myself I'll stick with the pencils so that I'm, I become really quite functional with toning because from watching a lot of videos, I've come to the understanding that understanding color theory isn't always that important, but the most important thing is understanding tone, which means getting the darkest bits as dark as they need to be and the lightest bits as light as they need to be in order for things to look realistic which is why some art has multi-colours and that sort of thing but yet still a portrait still looks fantastic in those multi-colours that aren't actually realistic even though it still provides a realistic result as a portrait Me too, absolutely. I, I can see uh, where you're coming from. I mean, getting to some form of realism in terms of portraits, that sort of thing, or drawings, absolutely. I'm totally interested in that side of it. But yeah, I quite like nature. So the idea of drawing things like this and maybe, you know, I have an, uh, an allotment. So in the UK, I don't know if that's the same as um, where you are in America, but that's like a, a piece of land that this all stems back all the way back to like World War II where people were given an allotment of land to grow vegetables for their families and so that still exists over here you have allotments and uh, 
Yeah, watercolor moves me too. Yeah, um, and I'm I'm switching it up bit by bit, and that's my point of going slowly, I suppose. So yeah, I grow a lot of flowers and that sort of thing along with the vegetables, and so I'm going to start bringing the flowers home and drawing those as well, and maybe yeah, that kind of thing too, so that I don't not so I don't get bored, I suppose. Lots of different mediums, but going slowly through them whilst changing what I'm drawing, I suppose, until I actually find exactly what I want. Yeah, absolutely. I've got watercolour paints and stuff, but I never use them. Um, but I have got colour pencils, and I think that's what I will eventually be moving on to. Well, what I'm hoping to move on to, I suppose, but I won't do it until I get the toning right. I'm going to put some of the veins through this now. Just put a little bit of really light toning in there first thing. Yeah, I think I watched one of your, you, you did a, a vertical stream, didn't you, with the uh, fun with a pencil? Yeah, I think I agree with that. I'm going to try and focus with um, with drawing. Plus, also, if you move on to painting, you still need to sketch out, you know, what you're actually going to paint. So you need to be really good at getting that. You need to get the proportion, the form, the the foreshortening, and everything else right, regardless of what it is that you're actually doing, don't you? So I'm doing the same. I'm sticking with that. I will move over to color pencils as well. But on the whole, I'm going to be sticking with the drawing for this year. 2024, it's the drawing year, man. <laughs> Although I have got alcohol pens as well to try out at some point. <laughs> yeah, I bought some is it, oh, hoo -hoo, uh, alcohol pen, pens. I've had them a month. I haven't touched them yet. Ah. To be honest, I think if you're going to do something like live streaming, I think if you do it and just do it and do it, do it till it's uh, it's almost like you know you're just in a room chatting with people. I think that's the only way to sort of succeed. To be honest, I mean I've done I've done I think once you've actually done a few videos. It's not a lot different at all. Once you get used to the streaming software, the vertical streams I think are really simple, but this stuff's all via OBS and I needed to get used to the software. So that made me a bit nervous. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm not nervous doing this now, which is a boon because uh, I certainly was at the start. I think everyone is. You've got to find a way to just become yourself and have a chance at yeah, I suppose being able to relax into this is the only way to manage to do it quite well, I suppose. That's what I'm trying to do anyway. Okay.
if you're planning on doing any more, let me know and I'll come along and uh, have a convo with you during it. Perhaps that'll help. Well, this paper is way better. You can just feel it laying on and layering over as well. In comparison to the other stuff, it's just, well, it's a dream. Really not long. Um, I've I've picked up I picked up a pencil and tried doing art for a while in in previous years and never really lasted more than a couple of months. Um, I've done that twice, I think. I haven't drawn for a few years and I've always regretted stopping. And that's because of time, really, constraints and stuff. But I've always, I've always regretted it, and I don't want to, I don't want to miss out, really, and, and not finish what I started, if you like. And I do feel I'm going to stick with it this time. I've made a real promise. YouTube as well, you know, it's um, kind of strange, but I've tried a few different things with YouTube and never managed to stick with that. And it, it isn't because I get bored of the video editing. It's not because I get bored of um, creating videos. I really like that part. I love the creative process. Um, in fact, that, there's, I have another channel that I started with, and I started out terrible and slowly got better. And I was actually teaching technical things like how to build WordPress websites and some video editing stuff as well. And that was, um, oh, <laughs> oh, what did I call that YouTube? Um, Easy Done WP. And that teaches a few things about uh, DaVinci Resolve and that sort of thing. However, just found it really dry. And I think you've got to do what you love. And I always loved art. And the only reason that it was put down was because of time constraints. And I have that now where I didn't before. So. I'm going to stick with it and I know I am I've sort of made a promise 
you know, that I'm going to give three full years to doing this to see just how good I can actually get. So I'm sort of really hopeful that this can go quite a long way with it, really. Time will tell, of course, but it doesn't feel hard, and that's the biggest part of the battle. It, I'm enjoying it. And I think now I've found something that I really enjoy, I think it can only get better, can't it? I'm not going to put it down as easy, and that's, yeah. I actually feel relaxed <laughs> for the first time that I'm doing something that I'm not going to be really itching to stop or that I'm only doing it because of the fact that it's something that I can do on YouTube so yeah it has a better purpose. What about yourself? How long have you been doing this? Interesting. Yep, yeah, technical stuff's an absolute bummer. If you get a bit too overwhelmed, it can cause anxiety, can't it? I've got a little bit of a head start. I, I did have a degree in um, computing, and so, yeah, I used to actually program up websites many years ago. Um, it, it actually, to be honest, even for me, you know, getting too involved in the techie stuff can actually cause anxiety. Best thing to do is to sit down and work out what it is that you're actually wanting to achieve in small bite-sized pieces and then just focus on just that so if if what you want to do is live stream then go to someone who really you know find a youtube channel that really explains what obs is really well or the software the streaming software you want to use and then just focus your spare time into that and or if it's just videos that you want to create because even DaVinci Resolve you can get totally lost with that stuff and it isn't fun not not if you feel pressured so yeah take it easy and just do a little bit at a time because it will take a while to get used to it there's people don't realize when you're doing YouTubing that you've got to get used to all of the streaming software the video software the editing of that software and then you've got to learn the thing that you're actually trying to do with the YouTube which is the art and the mediums and everything else as well it gets really complicated tiny little bits that's my advice that, that stops the stress I think Exactly, yeah. 
not fun when you're trying to do all of that at once. It's just... So do one thing well. You know, something that I found uh, that I quite enjoyed, which was really easy. Um, you know, I'd, I'd stick my iPhone over what I was doing. I would video that alone and nothing else. Uh, the actual drawing process then I would whack it straight into DaVinci Resolve I would times the um, I would times the creation of a drawing that might take me an hour and a half or to two hours by I think it's 14,000 in the speed up and that would make a 50 odd second short and then I would bap a bit of music uh, behind it and stick it up as shorts and if you look at my shorts they're not special, but they're very easy to make once you understand how to just speed it up, put some music behind it, produce it. So that's something that you know you can do that's nice, quick and easy, and you don't have to get too stressed out. Once you know how to do it, you can do it 10 minutes, maybe 15, and you, you can do it every time. Of course, the drawing, that's something totally different, but at least you've freed yourself up then, haven't you, to, to try and learn the drawing, which is what that's what we're here for really, isn't it? Ah, oh, cool, I'll take a look. I don't think it went that way at all, but I'm going that way. Okay. So I think the idea of what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to depict the shades that are on the outside of these rather than draw the dark lines where it shows that it's actually it's actually light lines. So I'm gonna shade around these to leave the lighter lines there, I think. Well, I'm gonna try and do that. Also, these. All have a lighter tint on the other side of that.
I know what you're saying, but if you watch some of the channels like um, Scott Christian Sava, he's even got a video that talks about never, never drawing without a reference. And the only people that draw without references are people that draw cartoons. And if you wanted to get into comic and cartoon stuff, he even goes, there's an artist website he goes to and he purchases drawings uh, sorry, he purchases photographs of people wearing certain types of outfits as references to the creatures that he draws. So the figures and the stances that they're in and the types of clothes that they're wearing all come from references even though he's doing caricatures and cartoons. So, you know, it might be that you might pick three or four pictures as a reference but the picture that you're creating it comes as an amalgamation of your creativity and those different pictures that you're you know bringing it in and accumulating it from if that makes any sense So this has all been with a B, nothing else. Well, I used the five H to do the outline of course, but only the B so far. And I'm not sure I'm gonna need much more than this to be honest, it seems.
I'm not sure I like that song. Well, no, I am sure that I don't. What is that? Oh, let's look, let's look. So it's that time in the show. Hall of Stream time. Does it work? Boom. So they're the pictures that we've done in the last week. We've got Dobby, a parrot, and we've got Harry Potter holding a dead Dobby. Or dying Dobby. But yeah, I mean, essentially, what I'm thinking of doing is having this Hall of Stream up there and then putting the stream numbers that are actually on there each time and uh, just popping that into the show at about, well, nearing halfway, I suppose, depending upon how well this picture goes. But yeah, I'm um, going to do that, I think, halfway through each stream. I'm also, by the way, going to be, pop it back there, we've got picture of the week, which I'm going to start on Tuesday and whoever sends in the pictures that they're actually drawing during the stream and one gets picked out and picture of the week goes up there on the end of a Thursday so Tuesday and Thursday all the pictures get sent in but probably the pictures that get sent in on a Thursday will uh, sorry before a Thursday will be the ones that get considered to go up for the next week and we'll renew it every Tuesday. So yeah, picture of the week will go down there on the bottom left hand side of the stream from whoever sends in a picture that gets judged to be, well, not necessarily the best, but certainly one of the most interesting or one of the most intriguing pictures that's been done during the stream and we'll be putting it straight up there. Actually, I'll be picking those directly off of the draw with Ken hashtag that gets put up onto Instagram so anybody who wants to be considered to have their picture put up all they have to do is put draw with Ken as a hashtag and put it onto their Insta accounts and I'll pick it up from there and be able to judge them and that way I can put a picture up on the stream each week as I'm doing it so yeah well that'd be a nice touch nice idea for people that come along be a part of the community and watch so and draw along because that's what we're here for. Learning, drawing, chatting, musing. But generally having a relaxing and good time. Thanks, Jess. Jess. Jesco. Is it Jesco?
Yeah, cool. Now one of my favourite things about this is once you actually do sit down and start focusing on this one thing it enters your mind. It's like a meditation really and yeah, it's pretty cool. That is not looking bad, is it? Not looking bad. Okay. funny how on this leaf here there's barely any sort of line there. Well not on the reference photo.
Okay, coming along. On the uh, on the seventeenth of March, I'm taking a five-week course, which is just two hours a week in figure drawing and anatomy. So, hopefully, that will help me. I've got real well limitations on drawing figures, and uh, I'm hoping that that will help bring me along. Quite a long way it's a five week course so quite a lot of instruction um so i'm quite looking forward to that should be a really good course seventeenth of april not march april <laughs> or it'd be finished already wouldn't it
Okay. So I'm trying to get some of that. Some of that blending in. blend it and then we're going to put some of the darker tones in after we've blended it through we've tried to whiten the areas <clears throat> maybe try and look at the reference picture a bit more Ken. and actually get the ideas of where some of the darker stuff is which is there and then there's definitely some Stuff here like that. This paper is so much better. I don't even know where to. It's just so much better than what I was using yesterday. Oh, I'm really enjoying using this. This this could be costly. <laughs> see how it's just it's blending is so easy we don't want too deep. I cannot beat this uh, mono eraser, this mono zero eraser for accuracy. It's ridiculously good. It beats the electric eraser by miles. Thank you. 
I think it's deeper here. I shade this bit evenly a minute. I can put the darker tones in this side, I think. Okay. Hmm. I think it's just too.
frente a frente hasta me saludó Happy about both of those for those now, that's good. Now we do have, there's a small piece that comes out on the right hand side but I think I'm going to miss that. I'm trying to look at what sort of lights and darks are there. And I'm wondering, I'm wondering how that's going to go on. I've got to try the charcoal on this just have to. If I try the charcoal for a background, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So we'll finish that off just there because we can see that that went through there. Okay. Using the wrong pencil, of course. Where's my B pencil gone? There she is. Okay. Okay, so I think we're going to go for the background. One thing that I can see though is that there's some. You know, I've heard that you can put graphite directly on top of charcoal, but you can't put. Yeah, you don't want to put the charcoal on top of graphite. So, so yeah. I'm going to put a charcoal smothering around the outsides and I'm going to make that, I'm going to try and make it fairly even. Let's see what happens and then I'll try and darken up and stipple some of it I think and see how well I can actually do that stippling effect. Yeah, that's what we're going to do I think. And actually what will make this show is the, the darkness that's, that's, that's shown in the background of the reference image that goes all the way around the leaf itself, I think. So that's what we're going to go for. Yeah, let's do it. It ain't going to get done just staring at it, is it?
So I want to use the same charcoal that I've been using that I made myself with a tea strainer. All from, from this pencil, which effectively you just You literally just create by putting the tea strainer over that and stipple it. And you create your own. Quick and easy, simple way. And it saves a bit of money buying some powder. I've got lots of pencils, so might as well use them up. Here we go. Been getting decent results with um, with this. And more control. Don't go over the graphite. So this is what I'm going to use today. Again, and we'll see what this um, Arches hot press watercolor paper does. Let's see. We're just going to go easy. I'm going to need some tissue to smooth this in, I think. What's the words? Trust the process? It's quite frightening, isn't it? So sort of putting this stuff on and it doesn't look very, very good. But it is all just learning, so it really doesn't matter, does it?
Okay, let's get some of that tissue, I think. Okay, let's have a look at that reference now. There are so many details in this that I'm not even going to try to get close. 
in terms of the dark and light shading around it all, I'm just going to give some context to the stippling effect of the moss. And in black and white, it's difficult to sort of see it anyway, I think. So, what it does do though, is it shows a really nice outline to the leaf, because there's so many deep, dark areas. Don't forget if you are drawing, hashtag draw with Ken, and you may get pick of the week. And be on the bottom right hand side of the live streams that I'm doing in the following week each week. Bit of fun. Also, really quite like looking at what people are creating so it's fun for me as well Okay. So lots of stipples to go, but you can see the highlights and the deep tones really bring out the leaf better and it, it defines it, which is only right because that, that is what shading is it, and tones are, it's, it's just helping it along, making that more of a realistic look slowly come out. I have to say this Arches hot press water paper is really nice. I don't think the charcoal went on it necessarily any easier than it did on some of the other papers that I've used recently, but I've definitely been enjoying it. And uh, the, only, the only hassle is the expense, I suppose. But, as things improve, it's definitely the sort of paper that I want to be using. OK. 
Okay, so. Now we're going to enlarge this image and just get a real look at. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's all out of focus stuff anyway. Um, the moss in the background, so I think. Just going to go from some deep areas and some lighter toned areas and sort of all over the place there to give it a, a kind of a mottled look. Which can I do this with the blending stub a little bit? Let's see. I don't know if I can. No, I don't think it's going to work at all with this. It really, I want to be doing it with the graphite, don't I? But the graphite will go over it. Uh, you can see it straight away with the graphite. So, okay, so we're gonna, we're just gonna put these deep areas with this pencil and then we're gonna blend those in, I think. concept here is to just be all over the place a little bit with it. Like bigger lumps here and long lumps and thin, thin, thin lumps. Trouble is, it's all, it's all got to be so much more busier than that, I think. To look even more real. So I'm just going to. You ever been there? Three quarters of the way through a drawing, and you do that, you go, ah! <laughs> so that, everywhere, and all of a sudden we've got some sort of mossed look that goes across it. 20 minutes? Hmm, maybe not. Let's see. Let's see if we can get at least this part done during the rest of this stream. We can do this all around it like this. And then I think we can possibly put some of the sort of deeper colors in then blend this in once we've done this and I think that might give us that because really we're looking to try and create an illusion aren't we of, of drawing the texture of the moss into the background like a, an out of slightly out of focus texture hmm. that's what we're after
so. We're not gonna spend, we're not gonna spend too much time trying to get this accurate representation here. We're just going to like scribble away. Um, yep. Should have got some sort of smudged background really, I think, in a short period of time. This is going to be something that I'm not going to finish within this the next 15 minutes but I will get quite a way through it and I think I'll just finish it off the stream and uh, show it on the Hall of Stream um, which makes sense doesn't it show it on the Hall of Stream later I think um, yeah I definitely will so going to yeah yeah I'll show it on the Hall of Stream later so actually I think given the fact that this is going to be quite a boring end of uh, trying to get this stuff done I'm going to end the stream now and I will see you all on Tuesday next week at 8 p.m. GMT or 4 p.m. Um, in New York, is it? 4 p.m. in New York, I believe. Yeah, absolutely. So I'll see all of you on Tuesday next week. Thanks for tuning in. And this will be over on the Hall of Stream over there and we'll be on our next one. So I'll put a reference image up on the community tab and I will stick up a scheduled stream in the morning I believe of Tuesday so absolutely I'll see you then thanks a lot for tuning in it's been fantastic and uh, yeah I really appreciate everybody who comes along and joins in 